so hello hello everyone hello again uh, to you who have been coming back to my small knitting channel welcome to you who just uh, arrived and found this my little place i'm isabel uh, i'm knitting from france i have three sons i have three cats some say it's related and uh, uh, I intend to post one video per week, alternating weeks with uh, for the topics. One week it's going to be my own knitting adventures in a format that uh, people usually do their own knitting podcast with my Finnish objects, my weaves, my acquisitions, and etc. And every other week, and this is the week today that. With this topic, I will talk about uh, the woolly news. This is the way I've named my playlist in uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, so the news about the fiber community that have caught my attention. So it's that have caught my eyes. So it's very personal. I know it's very personal, but the, if this is of some interest to you, so please stay tuned. So, the first uh, thing or topic or news I want to talk about is that two of my favorite pattern creator and uh, yarn creator have teamed up again, or I don't know if they have teamed up, but anyway, they uh, are offering a pattern uh, for a shawl uh, that I think is very, very beautiful. So uh, the creator, the pattern creator is uh, Florence Sperling and she has, she's offering a pattern once again with a cocon uh, kit, a yarn kit. Uh, last year, my sons gifted me the Elvan shawl uh, kit with the pattern for uh, Christmas. I should have I should have <laughs> chose. I should have chosen. Chose, or I, sh I should have decided to wear it today, as I was going to talk about it. But I'm wearing the um, fresh peonies shawl uh, from uh, Trellis uh, Yarns and Maria, who with uh, lace and garter knits, I think. Uh, everywhere uh, for the pattern. I will link all the info down below. Uh, so um, last year I knitted the Elvan shawl from Florence Sperling and with the cocoon kit, the, the kit she recommended. This year I'm not sure I'm gonna uh, knit it or at least not right now because I have a lot of projects uh that i want to need before christmas um so i may or may not um uh, choose to buy the kit and and knit it uh, once again but um maybe later maybe later so it's a very delicate shawl it's called uh, little stitches shawl very delicate uh, alternating colors. I've not looked in the uh, what the description says. Maybe it's um, slip stitches. Maybe it's not uh, stranded color work. I haven't looked. Uh, I will maybe put the info somewhere on the screen uh, once um, uh, I finish recording. But anyway, it's a very beautiful, a very different vibe from uh, the Elvan shawl. It's all in the blues. I'm, I love blues. It's my main, blues is, blue is my black. So it's my main color in my wardrobe. So, um, uh, you know, maybe I will pick it up at some point, but not right now, not right now. So that was um, the segment about patterns. I don't have any other pattern or um, of course, of course, of course, Stephen West is having his uh, mysterical. Everyone is talking about it. I'm not going to chip in because I won't have any anything interesting to say about it. So yes, Stephen West is having his mystery call, uh, call, uh, cal. 
Um, you have young kids everywhere. Everywhere is offering, you know, suggestions. He's also the, uh, suggested some kind of way to um, associate colors and, and textures for uh, the yarn for the shawl. I have a shawl quantity for the uh, slip extravaganza. I'm going, I haven't talked about it uh, yet on my channel. This is the one I want to make. So maybe at some point I'll, uh, um, you know, I'll uh, uh, get the uh, a kit uh, or I put yarn together for this year's uh, mystery card for um, Stephen West. But for now, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I have so many other things to do. So many other things to need. So. Uh, um, and so many people have talked about it and are going to be talking about it and you're going to see pictures everywhere. So um, this is a whole thing in the fiber and wool community. I'm not contributing to that because I have nothing interesting to say about it. Um, so the next segment uh, is about uh, yarn companies and stores, things I've seen. Um, and I have a few, a few different... Um, uh, young, young companies uh, and used to uh, talk about. Uh, the first one is uh, that the founder of uh, De Réhomme Natura, I'm going to say it in French because you know I'm French, um, she is Solène Quillorer, uh, so she founded this company. Um, I love their yarns, I've knitted the Sotobosk shawl with it, uh, it's fabulous. Um, I've knitted a sweater, a colorwork sweater. I haven't, you know, talked about it yet uh, on my podcast either. Um, I, I love the yarn. I love the philosophy behind it. Uh, and I was very interesting into reading an interview she gave to uh, Pom Pom uh, magazine. So I will put all the links uh, down below and on the companion blog post that you can call it show notes if you want to. Um, so that you can have all the pics, uh, the pictures and all the links, maybe more links than I can put in the description box. Uh, so please have, have a read at uh, the interview she gave to Pom Pom Mag. It's very interesting if you are interested into the origin of this company of De Rerome Natura, if you want to know more about the environmental uh, uh, engage, you know, the, the guidelines they use, the yarn, the origin of the yarn, the processes uh, they are using, uh, all the ecosystem um, around around their company. Uh, it's a very interesting read. I'm I'm leaving that to you to for you to read, and I will give you uh, I will give you the link below. Uh, Maybe you know Pom Pom is having a cal, a year-round cal uh, every year, um, or at least this year, I think the year before too, uh, where you can knit any of their patterns. Um, and last month, uh, I, was it October or was it September? I think it was September. Derehom uh, Natura sponsored um, the last month's uh, cal. So, um, uh, you know, it's a, probably a long-term story between them. And, uh, uh, you know, the interview is very interesting to read. Um, one last thing about Pom Pom. They are shipping again uh, within Europe. Uh, there had been some problem with uh, tax and fees and stuff like that. Apparently, it's resolved. If it's not... There is a way that you can dispute maybe if uh, uh, you had uh, a fee to pay uh, to receive uh, anything from them. Um, anyway, it should be resolved right, right now and, uh, um, you know, they should have a way to uh, handle customs uh, directly on their side. This is what the EU recommends now. Uh, it happened to me from things I ordered from the UK. I had to pay an extra fee to get the package from my post office. I know it's not on the company side. It's, you know, something that has to be adjusted. 
uh, so that all customs from France or other EU countries and, you know, outside of EU are, you know, everything works again. Anyway, Pom uh, Pom is resuming, is restarting to sell uh, to EU and you should not have um, bad surprises when you get your package. So the second uh, segment in this uh, section I want to talk about, uh, about yarn uh, shops. Once again, everyone is going to be talking about it. They have talked about it a lot. Uh, but this shop also, or, you know, ecosystem also has a special place in my heart. It's uh, Espace Tricot. They are in Montreal, in Canada. And so uh, Lisa and Melissa have sold uh, their yarn, uh, their local yarn shop to two of their uh, employees, former employees, because now they are the owners. Uh, so, so that I don't mix up the name. Um, uh, so it's uh, Naomi and Stephanie. I will also leave all the names and links down below to their social uh, media accounts and everything. Um, so Lisa and Melissa had uh, founded the uh, Espace Tricot over 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and uh, they were somehow ready to move on to some other things. Um, so Melissa will uh, move to um, uh, hand-dyed uh, yarns, uh, process uh, yarns, um, with one of the friend, uh, Tanya, I could not find any link to her, to her in social media. So I haven't looked that much, but I was thinking that if in the Espace Tricot and Melissa's account, uh, you don't have the uh, link obvious, it's because she doesn't want, so that's fine. And I did not look further than that. Um, so anyway, they bought the studio, the dyeing studio that was attached to the Espace Tricot uh, place uh, to found another company that is Saunders Yarn uh, and to dye, hand dye uh, yarn on the Espace Tricot base that they have. So uh, uh, please, please... Um, uh, have a look at what they will be offering in the future because I think it's uh, um, that will be it's going to be very interesting to see how all everything develops and what they are doing. Uh, Lisa, on the other hand, is taking apparently that's what she said. That's what she said. Uh, taking some time for herself and going back to teaching. I can understand that because I'm a teacher and uh, I like it very much. I'm in academia, so. Uh, I can understand she wants to go back to teaching and, and reflect on what she wants to do with her life and, and you know, other things. So um, uh, I wish everyone good luck and good fortune and safe travels and nice winds and sun um, in their future endeavors in life. And as I said, Espace Trico has a special place in my heart because I've been knitting for over 50 years because I started to knit, maybe I was five or six years old with my grandmother, I'm 59. So, um, but I had a long time of interruption when after my first son was born, I started to decrease knitting. Of, of course, you have a baby. And then the two other sons came along. So I really completely stopped at that time and I picked it up. Um, around nine, 19, 20, 2018. So that's about uh, three years ago, three, four years ago. Um, because I had to stop working for at some point for different reasons. And uh, um, I discovered the online communities. Uh, my, my, my wonder cat is at the window. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to open to him. So he's, he's in the house. Um, this cat, whenever he wants to come in, I open him to him because uh, he wanders everywhere. He's a cat. So, uh, and sometimes I get very frustrated not to see him around and not knowing if he's well or not. Anyway, 
So he's in the house and he's, he's uh, eating, right? Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure I recall. I was saying that I picked up uh, knitting uh, a few years ago. And at that time, I discovered the online community around knitting. Ravelry, of course, but all the social accounts around uh, uh, knitting, the podcast on YouTube, the inter Instagram accounts and the, the sites, all the independent dyers um, who were offering marvelous yarns. You have one here. Um, I, I had no idea at the time how it was. I was, you know, back in the time where I would go to a local store most of the time it would be industrial yarns. I did not have in my area any local uh, producers, so I would buy from big yarn companies. So I discovered uh, the local uh, companies, the, um, how you can buy yarn to, at the same time to support the people who produce them, the environment, they are offering environmental friendly, uh, um, procedures and everything and, and it's very important to me so now I've shifted all my uh, knitting acquisitions to independent uh, dyers and producers anyway when I first discovered all that huge world I had no idea about before um, one of the first uh, account I, I had a look at and followed uh, was uh, Espace Tricot. Just because they were offering free patterns. And don't understand me right, wrong. I, I, I pay for a pattern whenever, if there is one I want to knit and, uh, and I buy the book and I buy the pattern and it's very, very right. And it's totally normal to me to buy patterns. But at the time, reading through their patterns, uh, not, for, not necessarily knitting things, I've, I've knit some of them, but um, reading through the patterns gave me all the feel about the culture around these online communities. So the English vocabulary for uh, knitting, um, the procedures, I discovered brioche at the time, I had no idea it existed. Um, and, and, you know, it helped me get the feel of the community and, and the culture and, um, you know, the habits around uh, uh, these online uh, knitting uh, groups. So um, they have a special place in my heart because they are the ones I've, I've encountered uh, very, very soon after I discovered Ravelry. Uh, not because they were either in French or in English, because you see, I, I'm not fluent anymore in English. I need, I need to get my English back. I need to get my English back. But anyway, um, I can read English and understand it, no, no problem. So uh, whether it's in French or in English has no in, much importance to me. Uh, for understanding what's going on. So I was reading the English patterns and the French patterns to learn about the uh, vocabulary, for example. And they helped me tremendously. They don't know about it and they will probably never know about it. But they helped me tremendously um, get, you know, getting into the community and, and, and uh, uh, discovering and the, you know the, the, the culture around it. So uh, uh, I want to thank them for that, um, and I want to you know wish all the best to them. I will continue to follow everyone, and 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 I will continue to uh, uh, you know have have a look at what they are doing and offering. So that's, uh, that's it for Espace Tricot. And um, now I'm going to talk about uh, another, another, I'm sure everyone knows about it once again. Um, it's uh, La Bien-Aimée. 
So la bien aimée is Emigil. Uh, she has an online uh, yarn uh, shop. Uh, she closed uh, this summer her real brick and mortar shop in Paris. I never had the chance to visit her and I will never have now. So I should have made the time to come and go to her shop when, when it was possible. But anyway, la bien aimée has teamed up, has partnered with Les Garçons. So Les Garçons uh, uh, are uh, Vincent and Maxime, uh, who are two uh, boys, two, two persons who, on one hand, uh, hand dye uh, yarn and, and sell their yarn, and on the other hand, make, make up patterns, create patterns. Uh, so, La bien Aimée and Les Garçons have collaborated to create a mystery box for, I guess, the end of the year, a holiday mystery box. And uh, uh, they, uh, as, as they can't, or as we cannot travel as we used to, um, it's Amy's way to think about Montreal, if Montreal, if she ever, you know, could could go there, what what she would find there, what she imagines about Montreal, and on the other hand, les garçons have imagined what they think about Paris. Paris. So uh, there are going to be two skins, two full skins, 100 gram of, uh, I guess, two full skins and eight mini skins in the kit in the mystery box uh, that are inspired of, uh, by what they think about uh, Montreal in one hand and Paris, Paris in the other hand. Uh, on on Amy's basis, I think I need to uh, check that. I think it's uh, on Amy's basis. I will write here on the screen if it's not. And uh, uh, so we, you will have more than that. There are, we'll have progress keepers, a trinket uh, and the pattern that uh, Vincent will have uh, created for the kit. Um, and um, I think it's a very interesting idea. I'm not sure I will pick up uh, the kit. It's called From Mont Montreal to Paris, to Paris, uh, de Montreal à Paris, from Montreal to Paris. Um, I'm not sure, because for the same reason, I'm not sure I'm going to get Florence Perling's um, uh, shawl and the kit from Cocon. I have so many things to knit. Uh, I already have two objects I want to knit that are waiting for almost a year. Uh, one is the uh, Sorel sweater. I knitted the summer Sorel, but I want to knit the Sorel, so I bought yarn from La Bien Aimée for that. Um, and uh, the other one is the Sleep Stravaganza from Stephen West. So, um, and I have the yarn for it too. So I need, I need to stop buying yarn and knit what I have because I'm not to hoard or, you know, have a big stock of yarn in my in my cupboards and in my uh, in my room so uh, um, you know I may not I may not buy it I may maybe you will know about it but uh, I may not buy it but anyway um, had I nothing in front of me to knit and plenty of time I would buy it. Um, the last uh, the last item I want to talk about in the, uh, you know, uh, yarn shops uh, announcements is about a French, uh, uh, a French creator. Uh, she is Liz, Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor. I wrote a couple of the books, uh, you know, when when I discovered all all, all the f communities and. And uh, so um, these books were also a way for me to get a feeling of what people were doing in this new world to me. And, you know, her books about knitting are really nice. So she, she has a web shop where 
uh, she sells uh, fabrics for sewing and other things and she has launched uh, a yarn line so she's offering two uh, two yarn bases, one is a fingering uh, merino, a 100 merino base, fingering weight, and another one is a lace mohair uh, line, which is 70% uh, mohair and 30% poly poly polyamide. Anyway, uh, and she states that spinning and dyeing are made in France. There are no other uh, information about that, but uh, I've looked around, I, have, I could not find where uh, the ori what was the origin of the yarn. And, you know, if this is of some importance to you as, is, as it is for me, um, I'm, I'm quite, unhappy she doesn't say uh, where the yarn is coming from and what the exact procedures are. Of course it's made in France, so okay, it sounds like a quality process to me, um, but, but I don't know where it is made, who's made it and where the yarn is coming from. So if it, this is of some, important to you, of, of some importance to you, maybe you have to keep it in mind. Uh, so um, that's that's it for uh, the uh, news about uh, yarn stores or online uh, yarn companies. And there is two books, yes, two books I want to talk about now. One book uh, is uh, one Helen uh, Arnsen uh, will will uh, publish. So it's going to be all in uh, Norwegian. Hopefully she will have um, an English version at some point. So she is uh, Fable Knitwear or Fable Knitting on uh, Instagram and she has a YouTube podcast too. And I talked about her last week because I like very much what she makes, very feminine and vintage vibes. Um, I, I like, I like, you know, I, I probably would not be able to knit and I would be able to knit, but not be able to wear that. I don't have the, I think, I think I don't have the proper body shape for that. But anyway, I like what she does very, very much. It's a lot of inspiration for me. And if the book is ever published in English, I will buy it. Uh, so I will link all the links down below, you know, she has a pre-order and uh, uh, apparently the book in Norwegian should be out sometime in October, maybe at the end of the, of the month. But, um, you know, I like very much her universe. She had uh, just a podcast I watched this week, so that was her la latest uh, podcast. Um, I like I like her and, you know, she had a striped, um, a striped uh, version of a Parisian inspiration for a sweater with these puffy sleeves and, you know, between uh, Parisian and uh, Brittany, uh, Bretagne inspiration for the stripes. Um, anyway, I, I like what she makes and I like, uh, you know, her universe. So maybe, maybe you would. And if you understand and can read Norwegian, maybe you should uh, pre-order her book. Um, so the last news I want to talk about uh, today is uh, uh, Len Magazine. Len Magazine, you know, has uh, had 52 weeks of socks a couple years ago. And I did not get it because I'm not a sock knitter for, knitter for now. Um, but uh, uh, I bought the 52 weeks of shawl uh, last year or at the beginning of this year, I don't remember. And I knitted one of the shawls and I will knit more. Um, and they will publish uh, 52 weeks of easy knits. Ah, my, my lady cat is here, so I'm going to stop again to open the door to her. Um, so hello, hello again. I've opened to her. She's a bit older. She's a, such a good girl. She waits. 
she doesn't ask you know she doesn't scratch but she waits and she looks at me with uh, her judgy eyes saying you're not opening to me so uh you know sorry i've i've interrupted but i've opened to her so uh Len magazine uh is uh, will be publishing the 52 weeks of easy needs uh next year in 2022 and uh, uh as it says it should be full of easy fun um enjoyable needs unique unique needs and uh, they are having a call right now it's open uh, to maybe suggest patterns uh, for the book so there is a link i will leave it down below if you want to uh, uh, you know submit patterns to uh, for the book and uh, uh, they will probably you know i'm not sure about the process behind that but they will um I choose uh, uh, something easy that in you know beginners can uh, need but also so they said it will be of interest to more advanced knitters I'm all for that um, and uh, this book I am sure I will pre-order once it's out uh, or for pre-order or buy it once it's out if there is no pre-order uh, uh, session before uh, the book is out uh, but anyway, I've enjoyed very much, I enjoy once again the universe, I enjoy the 52 weeks of shawls, the, the book, the, the feel of it, the smell of it. Um, I, I, I just look at it from time to time, just to have in my memories all the patterns from this book and maybe, you know, fantasize about I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that with that yarn, I've seen that yarn, etc, etc. So it's part of my pleasure. It's part of what's making me happy. Because I think we do have to consciously, mindfully um, place happiness in our lives, especially in these times that are very, very, very strange times. Even though in France the world is uh, opening a bit more uh, we can you know we can socialize a bit more um with you know respecting all the guidelines and everything um today the weather is fine there is some sun it's cold not too much wind we had five or six horrible days just before a lot of rain a lot of rain, uh, wind very cold my family was here and we had you know, um, planned to go visit. I live in a very uh, touristy place, so it very nice area. So, but we were very cold. And so one one afternoon we had a Sunday afternoon. It was nice, but nicer. But anyway, um, the sun is up. Uh, the house is uh, full of light. Um, the fifty-two weeks of shorts and. Uh, Fable Knitting, um, Ellen uh, will publish books that I'm looking forward to. Um, La Bien Aimée and Les Garçons, I like what they do. They have, you know, collaborated for, um, you know, a box uh, for the holidays. Espace Tricot is changing hands and, you know, a new a new start for them and a new start for the previous owners who are going to, you know, do other things with their, li with their lives. And Pompon, you know, can resume shipping to y Europe and have an interview with somebody I like very much. I like her company and I like her store, De Rejon Natura. And once again, Florence uh, Sperling and Coco have teamed up for very beautiful shawl. So all of that, all of these news have made me happy. And so what's, what's going to make you, what's, what will you choose to make you happy? Because we need to actively bring happiness in our lives. So thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, thank you for subscribing if you want to be notified uh, whenever I upload this uh, video and the next uh, video next week so, next week and uh, uh, I will see you 
next time I will upload a video and in the meantime be happy and happy knitting. <laughs>